Hey everybody, I'm C. Andrew Nelson, founder of Aquatacy. It's time to aquascape. Finally, I can detail for you my plans for aquascaping the Aquion LED 16 widescreen aquarium. For this uniquely shaped tank, I wanted something that would be an equally unique challenge. In this video, we'll cover the overall theme for this aquarium, the specific concept, the design and my design philosophy, the materials I'll be using, the layout of the tank, and the actual construction of the hardscape. So here's how my brain works. For quite some time now, I've wanted to set up a Southeast Asian tank, and when I received this aquarium, I saw it as the perfect opportunity to do just that. There are certain Southeast Asian fish species that I'm dying to keep, but I didn't want to throw them in with my South American fish in the 20-gallon tank. I'm not sure when it began to matter to me, but after years and years of setting up global community aquariums with fish and plants from all over the world, I now focus on defined regions. And when I say focus, I mean obsess over. So although my initial idea was for a broad Southeast Asian tank, as a challenge to myself, I narrowed the focus down to the country of Thailand. I chose Thailand because as I began to think about the Southeast Asian fish I was most interested in keeping, three of my must-haves originated from that country. That's when I decided to set up this aquarium exclusively with fish, plants, and invertebrates from Thailand. With so many marvelous fish and plants to choose from in this hobby, my idea of a Thailand-only tank might sound rather limiting. And it is. That's on purpose. Why would I purposely limit myself? Well, as an artist, I've always believed that limitation inspires imagination and innovation. What can you do with the limited resources that you have? Call it the MacGyver principle, if you like. I tend to look at it as a challenge, sort of like what you see on those cooking shows, like Food Network's Chopped only I won't be cooking these fish. Although this aquarium will be focused solely on Thailand, it's not gonna be a strict biotope. Instead, I want to combine the idea of a biotope with the philosophy behind Takashi Amano's nature aquarium style, hopefully striking a balance between the two. From the biotope aspect, I want to bring together as much as possible fish and plants from Thailand that would actually coexist in the wild. From the nature aquarium perspective, I want to use nature and landscape to help shape the design of this aquascape. For my inspiration in nature, I turn to two different places, Lake Tahoe, California, and Glacier Park, Montana. The inspiration began with a single rock I found in Lake Tahoe while vacationing there with my family this past winter. As my daughter and I walked across the snow and ice to the water's edge, this rock caught my eye. Its color and shape stood out to me in the crystal clear water. I felt compelled to pick it up. Something about it grabbed my creative mind and wouldn't let go. I brought it home and sat it on my desk. I stared at it and studied it for days. Then it struck me. No, not the rock. The reason why I liked the rock so much. I suddenly knew what it reminded me of. When I was a kid, my grandparents, my mother and I would make the annual road trip from California to Montana to visit our relatives. My great uncle, one of my grandmother's brothers, owned a ranch close to Glacier National Park, not far from the Canadian border. Winding its way through the property was the South Fork of the Two Medicine River. In summer, my cousins and I would spend hours playing in that lazy river. The water was as clear as Lake Tahoe, and the riverbed was covered in smooth stones, just like the one I pulled out of Tahoe's chilly waters. Up until this point, all the scapes in my own tanks have featured very jagged and dramatic rocks, but for this Thailand project, I wanted to do something different, drawing my inspiration from the well-worn stones and boulders I'd seen in the rivers, streams, and mountainsides in Montana. So the goal is to take the look of Montana and blend it with the setting of Thailand. In designing this aquascape, I knew my biggest challenge would be dealing with the dimensions of the Aquion LED 16 widescreen aquarium. The tank is 30 inches long and 16 inches high, but only eight inches deep from the front to the back, making it long, tall, and narrow. How would I create the illusion of depth and emulate the vastness of Montana in such a confining space? 
by using a design technique known as forced perspective. Forced perspective uses optical illusions to trick the mind into perceiving that objects are further away or closer, or bigger or smaller than they actually are, by playing with the scale, placement, and coloration of objects in relationship to the perspective from which they're viewed. This is a design technique that has been employed for hundreds of years in architecture, photography, feature films and television, and theme parks. It's also often used quite effectively in aquascaping. A typical forced perspective aquarium layout will slope the substrate steeply from the front of the tank to the back, keeping the foreground low and the background sloped much higher. All other materials, rock, wood, and plants, are scaled smaller the further up the slope they go, as to appear as if they're further away in the distance. However, having only 8 inches of depth to work with in this tank, trying to make a front-to-back slope isn't doable. I would have to slope the substrate at such a ridiculously steep incline that it would never be believable. Plus, at that steep a grade, the substrate won't stay in place very well, even with the use of embedded substrate supports. I needed to come up with a different idea. So instead of running my forced perspective front to back, I'm running it diagonally, with the front left corner designated as the foreground and the back right corner as the background. Keeping the Montana mountain stream inspiration in mind, the back right corner will represent the upstream portion of the river, while the front left corner represents the downstream deeper water section. For this project, I'll be using smooth river stones of varying sizes and coloration. Now, I could have gone out hunting for what I needed, gathering stones from rivers and streams and beaches and elsewhere. Normally, that's what I would do. But quite frankly, I don't have the time to do that these days. I can't be driving all over the place on a big rock hunt, hoping to find exactly what I need. Besides, why hunt when you can shop? If you've ever watched the reality TV competition show, Project Runway, then you know that they take the fashion design contestants to New York's Big Fabric Emporium, Mood, to find inspiration and to buy their materials. I took a page from that show and found all the rocks that I needed from my local landscape supply company. I was able to go through the bins of rocks that they had and cherry pick precisely what I wanted. I purposely brought home more than I could use to give myself design options. And believe it or not, I got all these stones for under 10 bucks. That's way cheaper than it would be to buy all your rocks at an aquarium store or even a home improvement store. As for the wood, I chose to use spider wood in this layout. I'm someone who likes to stockpile wood for aquarium use. Every time I find an interesting piece, especially if it's priced lower than it should be, I snatch it up right away. I've got tons of Malaysian driftwood and Mopani wood and spider wood tucked away in cabinets out here. Even my family has no idea how much wood I've got squirreled away. As an artist, I like to have design options. Although my first inclination was to use Malaysian driftwood in this scape because of the proximity of Malaysia to Thailand, I realized I needed something more delicate, more intricate, more appropriate to the scale of this tank. That's how I settled on spiderwood. And finally, for the substrate, I've chosen ADA Aqua Soil Amazonia and ADA La Plata Sand. I'm going to need a good nutrient-rich substrate for the plants because I'm not going to have high light and I'm not going to be running CO2. In fact, I'm sticking with just the stock equipment that came with the Aquion LED 16 widescreen. That's part of the challenge for me, and I think the standard equipment that comes with this aquarium is pretty good. For decorative purposes, I'll also be using some gravel from my 20-gallon tank to help make a transition from the stones to the sand. Normally, layout begins for me with a rough drawing of how I imagine the aquascape. Not in this case, however, because I had one physical hurdle to leap over before doing anything else. I had to do something to draw attention away from the filter intake tube. The Aquion LED 16 widescreen aquarium is a really nice kit, but the way the lid is designed, you're forced to place the filter smack dab in the middle. That's a good thing as far as filtration efficiency and water flow are concerned. What makes it a drawback for me is that the black intake tube is sticking down into the center of the scape. To solve this issue and to make everything more aesthetically pleasing when viewed from in front of the tank, I decided to find a tall piece of spider wood that could be placed in front of the intake tube and mask it from sight. Visiting my wonderful local fish store one day, I discovered that they had a fresh shipment of spider wood. Right on top of the pile was a piece of the exact height, shape, and look that I had envisioned. 
I snagged it immediately, along with another piece that would complement it beautifully. The store manager said that they had just put those out for sale mere minutes before I walked in. Timing is everything. With that mission accomplished, I could start drawing a rough version of the scape. Tall rocks on the back right side of the tank representing the large boulders found at the top of Montana mountain streams. The stones would get smaller towards the front left corner foreground representing the deep water area where smaller rocks that have washed downstream have deposited. The front two thirds on the right side will be a sandy area representing the shallow banks of the stream. I think it's important to have zones in a layout, individual sections that work together as a whole. In cinematic terms, each zone is like a scene in a movie. Each scene has a purpose and is compelling. Put them all together and you've got a story. In this layout, the scenes include the deep water planted area, the sandy bank area, the top of the roots as they begin to stretch down into the water, and the distant boulders. All these sections come together to form one aquascape, one story. When you're constructing a hardscape, you should nail down your most prominent feature first and foremost, then work outward from that point. For this scape, that would be the centerpiece of spiderwood since its placement is crucial to covering up the filter intake tube. I have another reason for placing this piece of wood right in front of the filter, and it has to do with a future inhabitant of this aquarium, but I'm getting ahead of myself. From this point, I begin placing stone, starting with the background boulders and working my way to the foreground planted area. Balance is so important in aquascaping and in art in general. With two pieces of wood on the left side, there needed to be something to balance it off on the right side. By placing a smaller piece of wood on the top of the tallest background rock, it creates the illusion of distance. Placing it on a rock as tall as this puts the tip of the wood up to the surface of the water, like the two pieces of wood on the left side foreground. This provides balance. By the way, when placing stones or driftwood or plants or anything in your layout, it's always best to use an odd number of items rather than an even number. Our brains are wired to perceive an even number of objects as ordered and an odd number of objects as random. Therefore, an odd number of layout objects appears more natural to us than an even number. The key to making this aquascape look right in an aquarium that has such limited depth is to use stones that appear to be big, yet are thin enough to allow me to pile up aqua soil behind them and still leave room in front for the sand. This is where having more rocks than I needed comes into play. Some rocks that I really wanted to use turned out to be too big or the wrong shape for where I wanted to place them. And one rock that I loved the look of and desperately wanted to use in this project turned out not to be aquarium safe. Oh well, it'll go out in the garden instead. So as you can see, I dry fit the wood and the main stones into place. I'm pretty happy with the look and feel of everything so far, so let's add the substrate and the finishing touches with the goal of making it look like everything settled here naturally. Thank you. 
started it all, the one that I pulled out of Lake Tahoe gets a place of honor right in the middle of the foreground. you enjoyed this video and got some ideas for your next hardscape. In part two, we're going to plant this scape with aquatic foliage indigenous to Thailand, so make sure you come on back for that. And if you like what you're seeing here on the Aquatacy channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And for more fun Aquatacy content, head on over to the Aquatacy Patreon page. It's a great way to support this channel and you get all kinds of exclusive articles, photos, and videos, plus some behind the scenes stuff about how we put the Aquatacy channel videos together. If you want to find out a little bit more about me as an artist and performer, you can go to my other channel, which is C. Andrew Nelson, or you can go to CAndrewNelson.com. Or if you want to learn a little bit about the business of visual effects and animation, which is what I do when I'm not doing all these other things, you can go to my other other channel, which is Teaching Spot, or you can go to TeachingSpot.com. Thank you so much for watching. New Aquatacy videos on Thursdays, and don't forget Aquatacy's Question of the Week on Sundays. And until next time, blessings to you. It's a great way to support this channel and you get all kinds of exclusive stuff, articles and photos and I'm drooling. Ugh.